I apologize for my weirdly out of season shirt, but honestly, I'm wearing pajamas. What's up everyone, my name is Kelsey. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're doing a book haul. And if you don't know what a book haul is, basically I'm just gonna show you all the books I've acquired in the last couple months, I think from November to now. When I first started my channel, I thought I would hate doing hauls because I wouldn't have anything to say about the books, but I was wrong because I did one haul before and the best part about them is that people comment on the video and tell me which books are awesome and that I should read first and which books are not good or people didn't like and then, you know, I can hold off on those or look up more reviews and see if I even wanna read it. So these are all books that, uh, let's see, mostly I purchased them through the book outlet uh, Black Friday sale and some of them were gifts and some of them I purchased with gift cards that I got for Christmas. So I have quite a stack to get through. Some of them are books I have actually already read, but I got them from the library or something and I wanted my own physical copy because I like them. So I'm just gonna get started with gifts. So first I have Power Surge by Sarah Coder. And pretty much all I know about this one is that it's an urban fantasy and the main character is non-binary and uses they, them pronouns, Aaron. And Aaron's family has been lying to them for their whole life. They thought they'd been hallucinating these like creatures, but it turns out that they're all real and Aaron has to figure out what to do with that new knowledge. And that's pretty much all I know about it. I haven't even seen any reviews for this book, but a lot of times I find these like uh, independently published or small, I think this was independent, but small publisher books because the author said something cool that went viral on Twitter and then I see their books and I add them to my wish list. So that was this one. <laughs> Next is Unbroken. This is, a, I think, a short story. Yeah, short story collection featuring disabled teens. And this was recommended to me by Kitty over at Jelly Fable. This is one of her one of her most frequently recommended books when people ask for recommendations with disabled characters. I sadly have a lack of disabled representation on my shelves, so this is one she's always pushing and I finally decided to get it. Next is Beyond the Red by Ava J. This is another one that I'm pretty sure they said some cool shit on Twitter and then I just added their book to my shelf with absolutely no other information. So all I know about this one is that it's a science fiction set in the future on another planet and it follows the female ruler of an empire and another character who is half alien, half human, and they have to like team up for something. I I'm sketch on the details, but. <laughs> Okay, next is Red Skies Falling by Alex London. This is a sequel to Black Wings Beating, which, why the, why did I buy this book? <laughs> because Black Wings Beating was on my most disappointing of 2019 list, and I still gave it three stars, but I was disappointed by a lot of things. But I heard that book two follows the female character from book one, who was my favorite part of book one, and I believe she's asexual and aromantic, so that's what I'm here for, and hopefully this one's better. I guess I'll link my most disappointing reads if you're interested and why I had problems with this. Okay, next is Inferior, How Science Got Women Wrong by Angela Sani. And this is all about how for hundreds of years, women were seen as inferior to men and scientists for hundreds of years agreed that that was the truth. And it's, I believe, a collection of studies and evidence that there's nothing inferior about women <laughs> as a whole. But I believe this is like a multiple branches of science kind of thing. Let's see, uh, biology, psychology, and anthropology. Delving into cutting edge studies to uncover a fascinating new portrait of women's brains, bodies, and role in human evolution. And I just think that sounds fascinating. It's one of my goals this year to read one nonfiction a month that's not a memoir or biography. So that's on my list. Next is, it's just called Nature Poem by Tommy Pico. I added this to my list when I was looking for poetry books that are not about sex or love because there are a lot of collections about those subjects and I just wanted something different. So this is supposed to be like, you know, just about nature, the good and the bad, everything in between. Next is The Impossible Contract by K.A. Dorr. This is book two in the Chronicles of Gadid. First book is The Perfect Assassin which I gave four stars, I really enjoyed it. And the second book kind of picks up where the first one left off, but following a new main perspective character. I'm trying to see if I can talk about this without spoiling book one. Okay, so I can a little bit. So Thana is a an assassin in this, oh, what's the word? Assassin guild, I guess, that takes carefully vetted contracts against people that can't be brought to justice in another way. So it's very selective, very thorough process, and she gets a really big contract and it follows her from there. So I can't wait for that one. I just think the 
the world building is so intricate in these books. It's like a desert city with this interesting magic system and like a currency system based on the availability of water. That was really interesting. Just loved it. Next is Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Nan. This is book two in the Girls of Paper and Fire. Is it a trilogy? Hmm. I actually don't know if this is two books or three book series. Anyways, book one follows Lei, I think I'm saying her name right, <laughs> who is chosen to be one of the king's consorts, I guess, and like plucked from her small village away from her family to be taken to the city and serve him for a year. And it follows her as she sort of uncovers a plot to overthrow this kingdom. It's also set in a world where there are like three casts of people. There are humans, there are, I, I don't remember, I think it's like moon and I don't know, demon or something like that. Either way, some are like humans, some are like half demon characteristics so they'll have like some features of animals and then there are full demons that are have like serious features of animals and they're like pure-blooded or whatever. I think I gave Girls of Paper and Fire four stars too. All right next is The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. This was my book of the month pick and this is supposed to be a I think this is horror but it might be more of a thriller and it follows two timelines. Oh that's interesting. I Clearly, I only ever read like the little descriptions of the books from Book of the Month, so I don't really know what they're about until I get them. But in 1982, a woman, Viv, is a night clerk at the Sundown Motel in Fell, New York, but there's something strange going on. And then we also follow a timeline in 2017, Carly, who has never been able to let go of the story of her Aunt Viv, who mysteriously disappeared from the Sundown Motel before she was born. That sounds pretty interesting. I want to read more like horror and thrillers this year. Last year, it was only like 8% of my reading and I really like them so I don't know why that happened. Next is Butcher Bird by Richard Cadry and I found this one when I was searching for more urban fantasy to read because I read a really good urban fantasy last year and it just got me in the mood for it. So this follows this guy named Spider who lives in San Francisco and owns a tattoo shop and one night he is saved from a demon and after that he can suddenly see all of the unworldly things in the world. Demons and angels and monsters, monster hunters. And he kind of gets sucked into this uh, plot of monster hunting and saving the world. Next, Trail of Lightning, which I've actually already read and gave four out of five stars, but I wanted my own copy. And this follows Maggie, who is a monster hunter in a future world, a dystopian world where climate disaster has changed everything forever. And suddenly there's a new monster threat that she can't handle alone and she has to partner up with a bunch of people in order to save their community. I really enjoyed this. I think Maggie is badass. I loved the love interest Kai. He's a very soft, sweet boy. I mean, he's an adult, but. Next is Servamp. This is a manga. I don't know anything about this. It was like $2 on Book Outlet and I want to read more comics. So I know there's like a small demon. This is a demon, I think. And that's just my vibe lately, I guess. No, he's a vampire. Wait, yeah? Yes, this small cat is a vampire. Okay, yeah, that sounds interesting to me. I'm into that. Next, Love from A to Z by S.K. Lee. This is a contemporary romance. I think it's like in an airport or something. Maybe they meet in an airport. I don't know. I know this is like a romance between these two and that's pretty much it because I read S.K. Lee's book, Saints and Misfits, and I really love that one. So when this one released, I wanted it. And I finally saw it on Book Outlet, so I picked it up for cheap. Next is The Hunger by Alma Katsu. This is another horror, and it's like an imagining of the Donner Party and what happened to them. If you're not familiar, the Donner Party was like traveling west, and they got trapped in the mountains, and they started eating each other. Right? I think so. Next is Queenie by Candace Cardi Williams. This is another one I don't know anything about, except it's a contemporary about this uh, woman, Queenie. And I pretty much picked this up because... It was on Book Outlet and Jesse from Bowties and Books had a positive review for this one, so I thought I would give it a shot. I've heard that Queenie is like a super relatable character and her life is like in a downward spiral because like things are going wrong at her job and her boyfriend is making her move out and like all these other terrible circumstances and you're just following her. So. Next is Obsidio by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. My reading journey with this was a saga because I read the first one on audiobook. What is it called? Illuminae. And I only gave it three stars and I thought it was just okay. But then I read the second one, Gemina, and I liked the characters way more. And I read this one in a physical format and I gave that one four stars. So I had to pick up the third one. <laughs> And I think this one follows all four characters, the two from the first book and the two from the second book. So I guess at this point, we'll see whether it was the audiobook that made me dislike the first two characters or if I just really didn't care about them. And last, this is last, 
That was it? Yeah, I guess so. Last is A Curse So Dark and Learn Lonely by Bridget Kamara. This is the first book in a trilogy. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I already read it. I gave it four stars. I really liked it and I wanted my own. And it was on Book Outlet. Like I cannot resist. I cannot resist a $5 hardback. What's wrong with me? But yeah, it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I thought it was really creative and inventive and I liked the main character Harper and Ren, but mostly, mostly I liked Grey, who is Ren's guard. I guess at this point he's the only one left and I mean we all know the basis of Beauty and the Beast but in this retelling every cycle like he's reliving the same cycle over and over and every time he has a chance to make a girl fall in love with him and if he doesn't at the end of the cycle he turns into a monster like an unthinking monster and rampages his city and starts killing his people and destroys his castle and then it starts all over again and I really enjoyed it. Okay those are all the books I got since November right? I feel like I'm missing something, but I tried to keep them all together. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, if you've read any of these, please let me know. I'd love to hear what you think of them and which ones I should prioritize. If you like this video, hit like. If you want to keep talking, you can find me on Twitter or Instagram at Kelsey Reads or Goodreads at Kelsey Lynn Reads. Damn it, I did my outro wrong. I post book-related videos every Wednesday, so if you want to see more, subscribe. If you like this video, hit like. If you want to keep talking, you can find me on Twitter or Instagram at Kelsey Reads or Goodreads at Kelsey Lynn Reads. Otherwise, I'll see you next week.